Delta Force. It's one of the United States' most mysterious special operations groups, working under the direct authority of the Joint Special Operations Command. To many, this elite group of soldiers is known only as the unit, the team you send in when nothing else will get the job done. Since their inception in the 1970s, they've been involved in some of the most vital counterinsurgency operations of the 20th and 21st centuries, but today some of them were about to embark on a mission like no other. They were going monster hunting. And not just any monster, we're talking about Siren Head, the 40-foot monstrosity created by Canadian horror maestro Trevor Henderson. But these unfortunate soldiers didn't know this quite yet. All they knew was that something evil was lurking in the woods. It was a situation so strange that to many it would feel like pure fiction, but Americans had been disappearing in scores within the dense forestry of the Pacific Northwest. Of course, the occasional disappearance is to be expected. The United States is a huge country, and people fall off the face of the earth all the time, but not like this. And what's more, whatever was causing these disappearances seemed to be growing bolder. Families and small communities near the forests were going missing from their homes. People were being stolen off the streets at night. Chaos reigned in the dark. Typically, disappearances like this would be the responsibility of local authorities or the FBI if disappearances could be connected across state lines. But given the increase in missing people, various national security agencies began to take a keen interest in the phenomenon. They began to theorize that some kind of woodland cult or insurgency group was behind the over 70 anomalous disappearances that occurred during the last two months. And if a group like this was growing in confidence enough to start snatching people from their homes, they could be preparing for a grander strike against a high-value target. Of course, the Pentagon didn't like the idea of dispatching high volumes of military operatives into the forests of the Pacific Northwest. Firstly, such a large mission could alert the insurgents and force them into hiding. Secondly, knowing that the military was pouring soldiers into the forest to address mysterious disappearances might cause a state of unwanted public panic. This is where Delta Force came in. We're talking about a special forces group with discretion in their DNA. Most of the group's most critical missions are still a complete mystery to the general public, and this would be no exception. Joint Special Operations Command authorized six Delta Force operatives to conduct a secret reconnaissance mission into the Ho Rainforest, located in the Olympic Peninsula in the Pacific Northwest. It was both the largest forest in Washington state and had the highest concentration of recent disappearances. The six operators were drawn in from Delta Force's G Squadron, the Sabre Squadron specialized in clandestine operations, and few were more clandestine than a secret counterinsurgency operation hidden right in the heart of the United States. But still, they had a better fighting chance than most. The Chosen Six, known internally as the Snakes, had personally been involved in some of the United States' most vital operations in the Middle East and Eastern Europe, and their identities were considered so mission critical that their true names and ranks were classified. They were known only by the following code names. Viper, Anaconda, Adder, Rattler, and Copperhead. They were organized under the authority of veteran field commander Jack Vasquez, better known to his men as Mamba. If they couldn't deal with the situation, then the situation couldn't be dealt with. The Snakes were dispatched from the Delta Force HQ, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, to their first checkpoint in the Ho Rainforest. As the teams wandered into the depths of the rainforest, bordered on all sides by ancient spruces and hemlocks, they had no idea that they were already being watched. But the watcher wouldn't strike just yet. It wait until it had the cover of night and darkness to make its first attack. As we alluded to earlier, the true cause of all the mysterious disappearances wasn't some crackpot insurgency group stationed deep in the forest, it was Siren Head, a mysterious living nightmare that seemed to enjoy one thing and one thing only, making people vanish without a trace. It stood among the trees inhumanly still as the snakes walked right past it. It dulled the quiet crackle of its speakers, teeth chattering silently in anticipation. More easy prey. Yes, it would take all of them, every single one, and it would relish in the task. Though his prey may not have been as easy as the monster anticipated, they were outfitted with state-of-the-art ballistic armor and night vision goggles. Most were armed with HK-416 assault rifles, designed specifically for Delta Force by Heckler & Koch, with the Colt 1911 as a sidearm. A few members of the team, like Anaconda, were a little more traditionalist, favoring the pump-action M870 shotgun with the classic M3A1 grease gun as a secondary weapon. Mamba even packed a few frag grenades on his person as a kind of good luck token. Typically, Siren Head's most well-armed prey were hapless hunters, shouldering bolt-action rifles or double-barreled shotguns. 
the snakes were in a different league. As the day began to creep into night, the six elite soldiers broke off into groups of three, henceforth known as Beta Team comprised of Viper, Adder, and Rattler, and Alpha Team comprised of Mamba, Anaconda, and Copperhead. They formed two discrete base camps and established comms over a secure radio link. They'd perform secret reconnaissance missions and shifts, gathering potential intel on whatever could be causing all the disappearances to report back to their superiors. Alpha Team were first on patrol, locked and loaded, with their night vision goggles engaged. They were charged with exploring six predetermined quadrants before the end of their shift, and they would make short work of it. Mamba took point with Anaconda and Copperhead covering his six. Things were relatively uneventful, until Anaconda whispered that he saw something moving in the trees, something big. Mamba asked whether what he saw could have been an Olympic black bear or a Roosevelt elk, both native to the area. Anaconda said no, it was much too tall and thin for that. What he saw was human-shaped, but wrong. It looked somehow stretched, and he didn't get a visual on the head. That was strange to say the least. Mamba realized immediately that they were dealing with a different situation to what they'd first assumed, and Beta Team had to be updated. Mamba pulled out his radio and called in, but he didn't get a response. There was a strange buzzing, crackling sound, almost like the device was malfunctioning, until suddenly a voice Mamba and the two others didn't recognize came shouting out of the speakers. It just repeated one word over and over, hate, 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 hate. Mamba shut off his radio and the team assumed it must be some kind of signal intercepting technology from the insurgents. They'd been rumbled and their lifeline to the outside had been cut off. Mamba changed the directive. They needed to rendezvous with Beta Team as soon as possible and reassess the situation before moving forward. That was when they started hearing gunfire and screaming. It echoed through the rainforest with harrowing clarity. Bullets, pained yells, screams of pure terror, and it was coming from the direction of Beta Team's camp. Mamba, Anaconda, and Copperhead charged in to provide backup for their embattled teammates, but by the time they arrived, there was nothing left. The camp was decimated. The little supplies they brought in were destroyed. The trees around the encampment had been shredded by gunfire, and most bizarre of all was the fact that there were no bodies. There wasn't even blood, just Viper, Adder, and Rattler's discarded guns. Mamba was shaken by the sight, but he didn't let it show. Their survival depended on maintaining composure. He ordered his two subordinates to take the spare magazines of their vanished former teammates and proceed with him out of the forest. When they attempted to re-establish comms, all they got was a disembodied voice screaming the word DIE again and again. They were on their own. Their new mission? Escape the forest alive. The snakes already had the fastest possible escape route planned out as a contingency, just in case everything went sideways. Though none of them expected it to go sideways quite like this, the team formed a tight formation, their weapons pointing in all directions knowing an attack could come from any angle. They just didn't anticipate it coming from above. A huge hand descended from the darkness of the canopy, gnarled and rotted, with fingers as long as a child's arm. The three men were shocked and horrified, only just dodging its grasping strike. Mamba raised the barrel of his HK-416 and fired off a staccato burst of gunfire, seeming to frighten the creature away. All that Alpha Team could do was press on, and they didn't have time to consider the nightmarish particulars of their situation. Whatever was attacking them wasn't human, but that didn't matter. All that mattered was survival. Anaconda was using his pump action to blast suppressing fire into the darkness around him when he was taken. The hand seemed to come from nowhere, grasping him by the leg and plucking him off the ground. The elite soldier managed to reach for his grease gun and rattle off some gunfire in the arm's direction, but ultimately it was futile. Mamba and Copperhead watched in horror as the third member of the trio was pulled, screaming into the dark. Needless to say, he was never seen again, just like all the others who'd gone missing in or near these cursed forests. As Mamba and Copperhead ran for their very lives, the forest came alive with a cacophony of horrific noises all around them. They heard the crackling hiss of radio static, the harsh screams and whispers of heavily modulated voices, and discordant fragments of old songs. The enemy was all around them. Was it one or many? It felt like it was everywhere, and even for these battle-hardened soldiers it was nothing less than confusing and utterly terrifying. Copperhead was starting to crack. He was spraying gunfire all around him, hoping he might hit something, or at least frighten this mysterious assailant away. He didn't want to be snatched in the darkness like all the others. He'd take anything over that. Even though Mamba ordered him to keep his cool as they ran, Copperhead kept blasting until he was dry firing. At that point, he whipped out his handy 1911 and 
just carried on burning through ammo, not that it'd save him. Suddenly, two legs long as tree trunks planted themselves in the ground between Mamba and Copperhead. The latter looked up and screamed at the monster standing before him, forty feet of rotting flesh topped by a rusty metal siren that screamed enraged nonsense. Mamba leveled his rifle at the creature but was batted aside like a rag doll. The creature would deal with Mamba later. For now, it wanted Copperhead. The soldier fell backwards in terror as those gnarled hands darted down toward him. His screaming, flailing body was snatched and pulled into the darkness. Only Mamba was left now, alone with a monster that had taken five others like him, and his ammo was starting to run low. Mamba regained his footing, his body still stinging from Siren Head's first strike. The beast had once again retreated into the dark, biding its time, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. He leveled his rifle and aimed into the inky blackness in front of him. A sudden movement out in the dark caused him to pull the trigger, firing off the last of his ammo for nothing. It was in that moment that he felt the looming presence of Siren Head standing behind him. He'd been outplayed. Game, set, and match. Now the creature would have its fun, just like it had with all the others. As it encroached, Mamba fell and began crawling away, the hissing sirens full of chattering teeth growing ever closer. The desperate soldier reached into his jacket and pulled something out, something that the creature couldn't quite make out. But it didn't matter. The prey was right there, for the taking. The creature reached out with a long, probing finger toward Mamba's chest, as though to deliver a taunting jab. That's when Mamba tore open his jacket and revealed his final trump card, ten frag grenades, with the pins pulled out of all of them, just for luck. In his last seconds, Mamba smiled as the creature seemed to twitch in final hesitation. The following boom echoed out through the forest, shaking the birds out of the trees. A brief flash in the dark that soon faded, until only darkness and silence remained. Mission accomplished. Check out Siren Head Explained and Cartoon Cat Explained for more nightmares from the twisted mind of Trevor Henderson.